refugees in Iran, and I'm sure we've got a lot of questions. Why don't you come on up, Sharif, and why don't you stand up, Carol, and uh, we'll... Oh, you um, stand in the middle. <laughs> That's right. Ladies in the middle. Um, and I'm sure we have a lot of questions. I might just begin, you talked uh, about, you know, natural potential alliance between the ethnic minorities in Iran and, of course, the Green Movement, but there are many suspicions and much mistrust on both sides. Uh, however, looking ahead or even right now, is there some way to begin a dialogue uh, between these ostensibly natural allies such that when the time comes, um, the two sides, the Green Movement and these ethnic minorities can uh, sort of meet up to create a real opposition, uh, Sharif and, mm -hmm. and Idris? Well, as I mentioned, um, there's been a lot of uh, <coughs> requests and uh, appeal to the Green Movement, its leaders, uh, the, to, to change attitude, to, to change the policies and perspective in regards to the ethnic groups. And uh, uh, we have uh, seen some developments from the Green Movement, especially the uh, people who are outside Iran, uh, who can freely speak and freely speak their minds, uh, who suppose uh, they are part of the movement. Uh, as you know, the movement's kind of, you know, been international, so there have been a lot of uh, people participating in the movement internationally, in pro participating in protests in cities that we've never seen before. So the Green Movement is only not only confined to Iran, but it's also outside Iran as well. The people who have been, um, who haven't been engaged in activities or activism against the regime, having witnessed the Green Movement, have been quite outspoken. So uh, there has been uh, some people, some leaders and, and, and factions within the Green Movement who have been uh, not only mentioning the ethnic groups, uh, but also uh, uh, requesting or appealing for a need to change uh, in, in, their, in the perspective of the Green Movement in regards to the ethnic groups. Without mentioning federalism, but obviously the ethnic groups uh, and the national uh, groups believe that um, considering Iran's diversity and Iran's diversi di diversity, it's best to accommodate them within a federal state. It's, as Idris mentioned, it's in the interest of everyone else, uh, including the ethnic groups. Uh, but again, there have been some, uh, some, um, some groups calling for uh, f for this, and, and there have been uh, the ethnic groups, uh, opposition groups, including uh, the Kurdistan Democratic Party of Iran, again, the one of the largest opposition groups, has welcomed uh, such moves, and definitely um, in the last, uh, uh, in the last, uh, uh, in the last, in the anniversary of the, uh, the, re the uh, revolution in, 19 in, in just a few weeks ago, uh, the party asked people, Iranian Kurds, to participate uh, if possible, in, in, in protest, but did not call for cities uh, to rise against the regime or to be, uh, because they, again, the precautions or, or, the, uh, or the consequences of, of such a thing, but again, ask people wherever possible to support the movement, uh, because there were some elements within the movements that had talked about uh, uh, possibly uh, accommodating the ethnic groups within, within uh, a structure that, uh, not federalism, but something similar. Uh, I just one uh, important thing about the Green Movement. It's a movement in, ma in the making. Uh, its goals are diffuse. Its uh, structure and organizational character is also diffuse. Uh, but uh, some people I've speaking, sp uh, that I spoke to in, in Europe, close to KDPI and other organizations, uh, have actually st told me that um, European politicians have approached them saying that we have a message from the leaders of the Green Movement. They want your support. And the Kurds, of course, they say, well, say something explicit about our rights and you will see demonstrations in Iranian Kurdistan. Because we have this experience with the Islamic regime. Everyone uh, was expecting that Iran would usher in a change. The, uh, the rights of people, ethnic minorities, human rights more generally would be respected. But turn out to be Islamic theocracy, which oppresses not only the ethnic minorities, but everyone in Iran, except those who are loyal to the regime, of course. So in that sense, I would say that there is a potential for dialogue, yes, but it is very much dependent on the future course of the Green Movement, in particular uh, on the stated objectives of the Green Movement. Alan, could just 
Yeah. Alan Keyswetter from the Middle East Institute. I actually have two questions. One is, could we hear a little more about the military occupation of Kurdistan? How far does it go back? Does it go back to the Shah, for example? Are the other uh, minority areas also militarily occupied? Is it harsh? And finally, maybe a few comments uh, about relations between the uh, Iranian Kurds and the Iraqi Kurds. Well, the, uh, the military uh, occupation, or the, I wouldn't say occupation, but the military presence and the militarization of Iran in Kurdistan and other ethnic groups is has always been there. Even during the, uh, the Shah, uh, there wasn't much a military presence, but it was also mostly the intelligent presence trying to suppress the, uh, the ethnic groups and the ethnic demands for, 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 uh, for democratizations and, 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 uh, and human rights. Uh, but the, um, in the, in the, following the revolution of 1979 uh, and the events that unfolded and obviously the opposition that was to the regime to becoming a, an theocratic uh, entity, uh, we saw, uh, in the, in the, at least in the first 15 years, uh, very violent uh, confrontations and, 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 and infighting between the Iranian forces and uh, the Kurdish opposition groups at that time, because Kurdistan was uh, the only, uh, the hotbed of resistance against the, the regime for, and for, for the first 10 years of the revolution, because the regime was able to crack down and suppress all the other uh, groups demanding uh, were fighting the regime, but Kurdistan was the, one of the only uh, places that was left um, t for the first uh, 10 years. Uh, so that led to a, a, a heavy military presence uh, till the state. And uh, the, uh, the police province or the police, uh, I mean, Iran is a state police state, uh, I mean, no question about that, but again, the presence of a various various factions of the military and the revolutionary guards in, in Iran and Kurdistan due to the fact that, yes, Iran and Kurdistan poses a threat and still uh, with a very large, uh, with large uh, uh, opposition uh, groups uh, has also resulted in the continuation of that militarization. In regards to the Iraqi Kurds and Iranian Kurds, uh, briefly, um, again, the Kurds will have relations in all parts of Kurdistan and, and this relationship uh, is is uh, is mutual, uh, but again, as as Carol was mentioning, that um, the Kurds in each area have relations with the re neighboring states or the states that uh, Kurdistan is or Kurdish Kurdistan in each part is situated. Uh, but again, it, it's been always mutual and trying to respect each other's uh, interests and at the same time um, maintaining cordial relationship between between various uh, groups. The Iraqi Kurds again having an uh, an, an autonomous <coughs> region. Uh, having an autonomous region, uh, Iraqi Kurdistan and Kurdistan hosts many of the opposition groups, the Iranian opposition groups. So that kind of annoys the Iranians many, many, uh, very often. Uh, but again, uh, it's because of the uh, dynamics and, and, and the, the nature of the relationship that goes back to decades and even uh, to the last 50 years. It's been very difficult for the regime, despite trying very hard to uh, create difficulties and tensions between the Iraqi Kurds and Iranian Kurds. Uh, we haven't seen that. So the relations are quite good. My name is Connie Zulam. I want to ask a question to Carol. Um, I attended one of your earlier talks and I really enjoyed it. Um, you, there you said that the, you finished your book in 1992 but could not find a publisher for it. Now that the Kurds are in the news, a printing house in Venezuela reconsidered your request 